So we're here at the National Museum, Museum of, of Natural, Natural History. History. I don't know, it's we so hard it. for me to remember. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we're here. Uh, we're gonna be here for probably like a, a few hours, I believe. So we're just gonna show you like the best stuff, or the things you can't miss in here. I'm super excited. The building itself from the outside looks so cool. Like I yeah. just love the structure of it. Um, has that old butt, the old yeah. field, like. It looks like a Lincoln Memorial, actually. Yeah, I really like it. So the very first thing you're going to see when you walk into this museum is this a gigantic elephant statue. Yes. How big it is. Yeah, it's super <laughs> big. Hey, put your hand down, girl. Yeah. Put your hand down, girl. <laughs> nobody, of, nobody asked for that. I've got a lot of energy right now because we're starting off. <laughs> yeah, just I know. We got refueled. <laughs> Because we were so tired this morning, yeah. but we're like, okay, we gotta make it happen, let's do this. And then we went to awesome breakfast at Founding Fathers, and now we're like, yes, let's yeah. go! Okay, so this elephant, uh, it's an African bush elephant. Uh, it's the largest mounted specimen of the world's largest living land animal. He was about 55 years old when killed by a big game hunter in 1955. Oh, 1955? So he's old. It's very iconic. Like every time you see uh, a picture about the Natural History Museum, this elephant always comes up. All right, so this is the mammal's room. You can hear uh, animal sounds. Here are some lions. Very interesting pose this otter has. That's the Northern River otter. What is that? What is that thing? It says it's a binturong. Binturong. Never heard of that. Never ever seen that thing there's before. A, there's a sloth. Kuma sloth. Uh, reminds me of Kuma. Oh, turn around though. Look at that. Like, wow. Oh, wow. 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 So like you can actually, I've seen people like have these as pets, but then like, so I was like, I really wanted a Fennec Fox, like truly wanted one. And then like I saw a YouTube video and they're freaking nuts. Yeah, so, yeah I mean, no they're all wild animals. <laughs> but they're so cute. Like look at how big their ears are. Right. So the fox's ears measure about one third of its body length. Did you know there's such a thing as a tree kangaroo? It's uh, it's got the little pocket too, just like the other kangaroo. These gliders always make me laugh. Sugar gliders. Why do they make you laugh? Because <laughs> they they just I don't know. It just looks funny to me. <laughs> they just look funny to you? Yeah, they just look funny to me, mm. just like floating in the sky, <laughs> like they have parachutes or something. <laughs> you look at the way he's going, like wee. Wow, that's awesome. And it reminds me of like Superman or something, the way they fly. <laughs> These little ones are so cute. See, look at him. See how he's yeah, spread. See, it makes him awesome. laugh when they're, when they're spread out. Oh, look, there's oh, a whole bunch of them, down. Candy. Yeah, that's so cute. Crazy how flat they go. Oh. So this is an interesting section. Objects from 48 countries are displayed, including both original finds and reproductions of fragile specimens kept in their country of origin. This one. Twiggy is 1.8 million years old. This one, 1.77. It kind of looks like it has a mask or something on the eyes. Yeah, these are all like just under 2 million years old. I like the Nutcracker Man. Where is he? Oh, that's the Nutcracker Man. It's named for its big teeth and strong chewing muscles. 1.8 million years old. It's hard to find a grouper this big anymore. Look how huge it is. That is a big grouper. And Candy's standing with her uh, first lady pose. It's all in the hand movement. All right, here's the giant squid. For centuries, there have been rumors of encounters and tall tales, but only in the past century has specimens begun replacing myth with fact. Okay. Oh my gosh, it's huge. So. Wow, it goes all the way down there to tentacles? Oh. So yeah, so this is, it starts here. Wow. Really, that's the tentacles? Yeah, look how long it goes. Oh my gosh. 
Oh, crazy. <laughs> this is crazy. This is a two to three year old immature female. Scientists believe that giant squid live less than five years. Oh, that's short. Said yes, this is real. It was caught in a fisherman's net. Hmm. So this is the evolution of the whale. Started out like this. 49 to 40 million years ago. That looks weird. This used to have like, like feet. And then I went to this. And that. That looks skinny there. All right, now we get to the fun stuff. Fossil haul, dinosaurs. I freaking love dinosaurs. Kenny's going, she's going, she's going. <laughs> oh, it's nice in here. That is an American mastodon. We're mostly related to living elephants. There's the iconic T-Rex. It was the largest meat eater in North America. It ate all dinosaurs, a tyrant king. This is cool, they have a fossil lab here. It says, I am uncovering fossils of small meat eating theropod dinosaurs. You can see some fossils there. I wanna see the actual workers. Are they at lunch or something? So I just got a map, it's a dollar donation. But really it's not donation. Okay. Yeah, they make you pay for they it. They make you pay for yeah. it. She wouldn't hand it to me. She's like, we gotta put the dollar in first. Yeah. She's a little like weird about it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we want to go to we want to go see the mummies. So we just did like the first floor. Uh, a lot of like mammal stuff, ocean, dinosaur, fossil fuel, fossil stuff, mistake fossil, fossil fuel. fuel. <laughs> Um, and then the second floor is um, the mummies, the gems, and then the bottom, bottom floor is just an auditorium and a ca like a cafe. All right, let's move on to the second floor then. All right, so this is the Hope Diamond place where jelly, gems, and minerals are. This is like the thing to see here. This is it. This is the Hope Diamond. So yeah, so the diamond actually started in India, then it was cut by King Louis XIV in France uh, to become a pendant and part of the crown jewels. And then later down in history, it was with Marie Antoinette, but then it got lost in the French Revolution for like 20 years. And then what? Then in the 1800s went to England. Yeah. And then it got reduced in size. Again. Again. And it was sold to England's King George IV. Then he died, and Henry Philip Hope, a London banker and gem collector, bought the diamond sometime in the 1830s. From then on, the diamond bore the Hope name. Oh, okay. All right, so let's just go on to 1958. Winston, so this guy Winston ended up with it, and he gave it to the Smithsonian Institution. So this is the guy, Harry Winston that donated the jewel, the Hope Diamond, to the Smithsonian. <laughs> Look at all these people taking a picture of the Hope Diamond now. It's like insane. You can't even see the enclosure anymore. I found another piece from my rock collection. <laughs> I used to have that tiny quartz. These are uh, crystal oddities. So I actually like this one, the microcline. That does look cool. It's a very pretty rock. See, I like pretty rocks. I've never seen twin crystals yeah. like that. There's a lot of twin crystals. Yeah, but Candy used to have this rock collection. Uh, but it was, it was for my geology yeah. class. So. Not that she had it herself, yeah, yeah, for yeah. hobbies. We, we had to like buy a whole set of, yeah. Yeah, for class. So she knows some stuff about rocks. But I already forgot all the names. Yeah. I no, but I think you like. have some memory of it. Yeah. I, I don't know anything about rocks, but I know it's like a thing. And people minerals, are really minerals. into it. Yeah, and minerals. Yeah. I just say and rocks. Crystals. I'm just like dumb it, dumbing it down. This looks like a brain to me. It's just a blob. <laughs> Look at that one up there. That looks crazy. Gross. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> you know what rock I really like? Which one? Onyx. It's like the oh, dark black. black, yeah. I have a. Was a ring that in your rock one. collection? I think so, but I actually have a ring now that has an onyx. Yeah, stone. I love that yeah. stone. I That's my favorite. Today. Yeah, that is my favorite. So I was like, I don't see mummies yet. 
the Egyptian mummy. Mummies are always fascinating. Just gotta check out mummy's tomb. Ancient Egyptian beliefs about the afterlife endured for more than 3,000 years. So this mummy in particular is from 150 BC to 50 AD. It's crazy. So like they would uh, bury jewelry with them too. But I'm like, look at this jewelry, and it's actually, you know, you still see this stuff around some places, like, you know, in the Midwest, like jewelry like this. Um, and it's really pretty. I mean, look at, you know, the one in the middle here. I like the colors and everything. This is from 200 BC to 150 AD. So this one's it. It says it's a real mummy with an exclamation point. The man died about 2,200 years ago. It says they ate little meat. Lung contains soot, probably inhaled by tending fires. Also, some internal organs remain intact. Oh, that's crazy. I always find this interesting about the coffins, like the pictures or the drawings inside, how it tells a story. But these mummified figures may represent offerings and hope for a new existence. Hmm. Well, they all have like some kind of meaning, all of them. It's interesting, like they were all about living forever, like preparing yeah. for eternity. Like they just wanted afterlife and to live forever. Like that was their whole thing. Just like the movie mommy. <laughs> oh, that's true, yeah. I never even thought about it, you know? Like, it's all tying together, like all these, like, <laughs> fake movies we watched. <laughs> so this is a commoner baby. <laughs> and the reason why they could tell it wasn't, like, you know, high society was because they only had one wrap of linen around it, whereas usually you would find mummies with, like, multiple layers of uh, elaborate fabric. Oh, wow. So this is, like, 300 BC to 8150. So that's what it would look like. <laughs> oh my gosh, are they real? Yes. Thank you. Five and six here. Oh my gosh. You're you're brave. I don't know if I could do that. Too scared. What is that? A leaf? It looks like a leaf. This is a caterpillar. That's a caterpillar? Yes. The larva stage of a moth. Oh my gosh. I've seen these things, <laughs> the grasshoppers. They're like in Florida everywhere. Yes, that's yeah. where they're from. Yeah. If he hops out of your hand, it's going to be. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. Oh, he's so brave. He's so gentle. I thought he was going to be a bit more aggressive. This is actually pretty cool. That's a yeah. neat section here. These are caterpillars. Oh, Let's see you hold it. <laughs> Aw. She's all that's laughing like it's cute. <laughs> okay, so we just got done with the Natural History Museum. It was actually smaller than I thought it was, um, but I think partly that's because Candy and I both have been to different natural history museums throughout other cities. So I just felt like, oh, we've seen all of this before. Like, I kind of remember some of this, or like, this was actually bigger at another museum. Not that it wasn't interesting, it was still interesting. We found like, you know, stuff that we learned about too, like the well, how it used to be a um, had, used to have feet. <laughs> and I'm sure you can learn that at other natural history museums. So, you know, you pick up other different things each time you go. And it is really nicely laid out, too. They always do, like, a great way of um, doing these exhibits in D.C. Each display at every history or natural history museum is different, and it's, like, creative and innovative. So I like yeah. seeing that. I like this one because I felt like it was more airy and spacious and bright compared mm -hmm. to other ones I've been to. I <laughs> think the only thing... Okay, everywhere we've been so far in DC, everyone has been super friendly, but the lady that was working here, so unfriendly, to the point where she's like being almost rude, like mean to me for no reason, because I uh, asked for a pamphlet. I didn't know someone, someone was in front of me, because it wasn't obvious, we like came from different sides. She's like, excuse me, she was, I gotta assist other people first. So I'm like, okay, calm down. Like, it's not like I just butted in, I was just like, hey. Anyway, she was just like very unfriendly and, yeah, that was a little bit disappointing because everyone else at all the other places have been to have been super friendly. So I hope she doesn't work here any longer. <laughs> disappointing other people. <laughs>
Also, we spent about two hours in there. You can probably spend three hours, but we browsed through a lot of it really quickly because again, like we've seen a lot of this. So we just were like, oh, we know about that. We know about this. So we kind of skipped through all that. So you could probably spend like three to four hours here, but we spent like just a couple hours, which is great because we we're kind of tired from yesterday's museum. Yeah. A lot of walking yesterday because you do a lot of walking in DC. So second day today, like um, we're kind of tired. Yeah, so I'm glad we, we were able to do it in two hours. Yes, me too. Um, but I hope this review of the museum helped you out. If it did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to watch more of our videos, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.